when it comes to this list that we're about to get into just please understand like we love living in hawaii we're raising our family here in hawaii but like i said everywhere you go if you live in la obviously you hate the traffic you hate sitting in traffic for two hours who really likes sitting in traffic for two plus hours unbelievable Right? I went to LA and it was like a vacuum sucking you back in. I couldn't leave LA, right? I mean, so no matter where you live, if you live up in the north, right? You're like, man, I can't, it's like, it's cold nine months out of the year. And I absolutely hate that, right? But you live there, right? And, and you love living there and you love it. So please take that context with this, right? Before you start trying to bash in the comments or whatever, right? Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. So these may be things that you just absolutely hate and can't stand and could be deal breakers for you even moving to Hawaii. Or these to me like, Ryan, pfft. That ain't that bad, man. Like I said, I'm from LA and we got bad traffic. If you're telling me your traffic's bad, can't be anything compared to what we got going on here, right? So let's go ahead and dive into these things. On that note, let's go ahead and kick things off with number five. And these are really in no particular order, but we're gonna go from five to one. Number five being the traffic. We really do have bad traffic out here on the island of Oahu specifically or in Honolulu County, right? Some of y'all know the island as Honolulu and you don't even know it's named Oahu. Some of you know it's named Oahu and think Honolulu is a little city, right? It's all Honolulu County. Well, island of Oahu is Honolulu County. So either way it works anyway. Got totally sidetracked. The traffic can be terrible, okay? Now, a lot of times parents and people going to school, right? If For me, when I was going to college, I was going to HPU, which is in Kaneohe. And at the time I was living in Kapolei. I would plan my entire school schedule and my day around the traffic. So how bad is the traffic? What time is the traffic bad? Obviously, the hub is downtown Honolulu, right? And everything by the airport. So you got that hub of, of basically jobs and a lot of people cruising from either central or west all the way going east. So a lot of people getting on H1 freeway at the same time. And this is when things get really, really congested. So you got everybody coming to the hub, right? And then also from Hawaii Kai side, you got people coming from that side too, okay? Everybody coming to the hub at the same time, which Typically traffic starts to get bad probably around 5.30 ish in the morning, right? Give or take, depending on the holidays, what's going on, is school out, right? These types of things matter. Um, but typically around 5.30 in the morning, you're gonna start to notice the congestion start to build up. If somebody blows a tire, forgets to put gas, right? And I know it's expensive right now, um, or whatever the case may be, or causes a little fender bender, it's shot. Traffic is shot for the day, forget about it. Like it, it's shot for the day, um, good luck. So it, around 5.30 and then it usually dies down, I would say probably 8.30ish to 9. Um, they do have the HOV lane on the left side if you have two or more passengers. Sometimes that even gets congested. And that's so in the morning time going from really west to east. Now, on the reverse flip side, right, when we're talking about everybody's getting off of work. And so it's funny too in Hawaii, it's kind of like everybody's trying to get off work before the next person or the next job or the next company. Everybody's trying to get off work and it's like this mad dash to get on the freeway and, and beat traffic. So that's actually going to start around 3.30 in the afternoon. 3.30 in the afternoon is when you're going to start to notice, especially by the airport, things are going to start to get a little backed up. And as, as the time goes by, it's just going to get heavier and heavier. And then you might try to take a cutoff through Pearl City or something like that and make your way west from there. Nope, not going to work because then if school is in, you got all those traffic lights, the school buses. So been there, done that, tried it all. All right, traffic can be just absolutely horrendous. And if you're not looking to live near a city or something like that, that just has terrible traffic and you want to be just out in the open space and you don't, you know, don't want to have to do that kind of stuff, maybe it ain't for you, right? But if that's something that you can deal with and, and you're like, really, it can't be that bad, Ryan. Well, text me and get on a call with us and we can talk more about it. Number four on our list is going to be that it's not so easy to travel. And let's dive into this and really, what, what do you mean, Ryan? What do you mean it's not easy to travel? So when we're talking about the Honolulu airport. Yes, we're in the middle of the Pacific. We got flights going to Japan, to the Philippines, right? All that side, Australia. And then we got flights going to the mainland. Now, what I mean by it's not so easy to travel is the expenses, okay? And the flight times and stuff like that. So Hawaii, a lot of airlines still don't even fly here. Like I was just recently looking for um, JetBlue, right? Southwest, so Southwest recently just started flying here not too long ago. Um, and I was looking to see if JetBlue flies back because I did, I did a quick JetBlue flight and I actually liked it. I thought it was, I thought it was nice. Um, well, I mean, I'm, I'm not high class, but I thought it was nice, right? So they don't even fly out here anymore or at all, right? Not anymore. JetBlue doesn't fly out here, right? So they've kind of partnered with Hawaiian Airlines and I was just looking this up. But anyway, 
So sometimes like even catching a direct flight, if you're trying to travel like Hawaii to East Coast, you're looking at, you know, 14 hour flight, which is long. That's a long time in the air, right? So a lot of times there's always these connecting flights. You gotta, you gotta have a layover somewhere a lot of times. And then when we talk about the expenses, if it's just you traveling, it may not be that bad. I was actually just looking at tickets to Phoenix um, and it was roughly 550 for a round trip, just me, just me, right? Now, if my wife comes, what are we looking at? Prob double, right? If my two boys come, what are we looking at? You can see how this is this is starting to add up. It's like, oh boy, wow, this this is really like piling on here as far as the travel expenses. And then we got, you know, bags, you're paying for your bags. So we're just talking about the flight. Now what about when we get there, right? Okay, where are we staying? That's gonna be an expense. Okay, so let's let's keep caking this on, right? Layers of cake here. And then um, do we need to rent a car? Are we renting a car? Yes, okay, that's an expense. And with gas prices now, it's absolutely nuts. Are we Ubering it? Well, that's an expense every time. And then food and all these other things, right? When it comes to traveling. So this is really what I mean by, it's a lot of people spend a lot of uh, their their life really saving up to come to Hawaii for a vacation. But the people here in Hawaii are doing the same exact thing to leave. It's crazy how um, it just can really cost you an arm and a leg to just to, to travel somewhere and to find a flight that is gonna be meeting the times and things like that that you need. So that's what I mean by it's not so easy to travel when you start to think about these things is okay, we wanna go, we wanna leave the island for you know a few days or, or a little bit and then you got the time change. That time change, if you're, like I said, if you're going east coast, six hours, right? Um, central time is five hours, Pacific Standard Time is three, which isn't that bad. But yeah, it can really mess you up. I just did a lot of traveling recently and my I was all messed up for a few days just with the time change and the travel. So that's what we mean by it's not so easy to travel. Number three on our list is going to be that summer heat. Now look, it's the summer, we get it. It's hot everywhere. I've experienced heat in a, a number of places, right? I've experienced heat in South the Carolinas, Florida, Georgia, you know, Texas, uh, Northeast, right? Um, the West Coast, anything like that. Uh, mostly tropical, but I've experienced a lot of different climates. And really, when I'm talking about Hawaii's summer heat, we are in a tropical environment. We are closer to the equator. So when you walk outside during the summer and it's in, you know, 95 degrees, that thing smacks you. I'm not kidding. Like that sun hits your skin. You're like, oh my God, like <laughs> that, it's hot today. It's super hot today. Right? Like how fast can we get to the beach and get in the water? Because that's that's the way to cool down. That's what everybody does. It's super hot. That sand is burning your toes on your way to the water, right? It's super hot. We're just closer to the equator down here. So the summer heat can really be nuts. And it's not like the Vegas summer heat, right? We know like Vegas and Arizona, for instance, those those places get into like the 120s. We don't really get up there as far as the temperature when we're talking about um, just temperature 120, we get to about the 99, we get like 95, 99. We always have the ocean breezes, but at the same time, it's just super hot. And then if you get rain, oh man. So if you get rain, it just gets really muggy. So on a hot day, like a 95 degree rain, uh, day, a cloud of rain will come by, right? And nobody bats an eye. That's just kind of how it is here. Nobody bats an eye. The cloud of rain just comes. Everybody's at the beach. It'll go away. It does in like five minutes. Nobody, nobody bats an eye. But now outside, it's like super just sticky and mucky because of that, that, that heat mixed with that moisture and precipitation. It's just gross. It's weird. Tastes weird. Or not tastes weird, but it feels weird, right? So when you're talking about Vegas, really dry, right? It's just a really dry climate. They don't have all that precipitation and the sun is just, it's just super hot. Okay. So different types of environments, but the summer heat is something that can really, really like just wear down on you. And especially, you know, ACs, houses not having ACs, some of the older ones anyway, the cost of running your AC, and you're gonna want some sunblock. If you burn really easily like I do, right? You're probably gonna want some sunblock. Even if I just took my kids to the park for an hour in the summer, I'm gonna come back with like farmer's tan if I'm wearing a shirt like this. So definitely summer heat can be something just not, you don't wanna mess with. Number two on our list is going to be, there's only so much you can do out here, all right? On the island of Oahu, there's tons of cool things to do. I've been there, seen that, done them all, most of them anyway, right? I'm not putting my life at risk for, for the gram, not doing it, right? There's actually just a story recently of a girl who fell down Olamana, which is Three Peaks. Um, one of the most dangerous hikes, especially the third peak. 
and uh, it was just sad to read that kind of stuff. But for me, like I, I'll never put my life at risk for for a view or a picture or stuff like that. But there are tons of other safe hikes to do, safer hikes, I will say. So don't go, oh, Ryan said this was safe. Nope, didn't say that. Uh, that's my disclaimer. You hike at all at your own risk. But anyway, how many times can you do that hike over and over before you're like, I've stepped in this mud and I've been in this waterfall and I've seen and done this, right? A lot of times I'll do them again because I have family that comes and they want to go hiking. And I'm like, all right, cool. Let's go do this one, right? How many times can you go to the beach? Some people don't mind it. Beach every day. Great. Love it, right? Some of us, so it's just like, eh, I don't really want to go to the beach, especially when it's that summer heat, right? That, that sand's going to burn me. The sand's going to burn me. The sun's going to burn me, right? I got to stay in the water the whole time. So unless you bring like one of them tents things, right? But anyway, how many times can you do the same thing over and over? So a lot of times on the island, people get island fever. My wife and I, we leave a few times a year um, to go several other places, just see and do other things because we don't have sports teams out here. We don't get a lot of events out here when we're talking about, you know, your favorite artist, whoever it is, whatever song, brand, uh, genre you listen to. Um, a lot of artists don't really just come out here. Um, we were some of the last to start to reopen and all that's still pretty recent too as of the time of this recording So we just don't get a lot of the events and things. We don't have any pro teams, right? We don't we just don't have a lot of that stuff. We have like the Blaisdale Center uh, We got the Aloha Stadium, which is super old and there's talks of building a new stadium So like I said, how many times can you do the same thing over and over? The beach is great We absolutely love the beach, right? But we don't really just like to go to the beach all the time there's a water, there's, there's a wet and wild, wet and wild is kind of expensive. To me, it's overpriced. You got the Croc Center, which to me is better um, for the kids anyway. And that's right around the corner too. Way, way less, costs way less. Uh, but how many times can you do that? So you see what I'm saying? There's only so much you can do over and over and over. Um, what, what else comes to mind is my recent travels. So I was actually in Vegas with my wife and my brother hits me up and he's like, hey, the Tar Heels are playing in the Final Four. Do you want to go? I know you're on the mainland right now. I, asked him, I obviously got permission from the wife, right? And uh, she's like, yeah, go have fun with your brother. So I flew. You can't do this, right, from here, right? Uh, so I flew from Vegas to South Florida and just hung for with my brother for a 12-hour, 13-hour road trip up the coast um, or up to 10, really, and then stopped in Mississippi and then went over to New Orleans the next day. We watched the Final Four in New Orleans. Right, and then um, very next day, you know, great time. Tar Heels beat Duke, right? Go t go Heels, and then flew right back to Vegas. Met back up with my wife. I'm like, this is the type of things like in Hawaii, it can't you can't really do that. You can't really do that kind of stuff. So that's one of the things that really eats at us is we can't just get in the car and go on this long road trip and go somewhere. We can't just catch a you know a hundred dollar flight, hundred fifty dollar flight to the next state over or whatever it might be, and be there in three hours. So that's some of the things that you've got to be you know come to terms with. And if you're okay with that. Fine, Hawaii is definitely the place for you. Number one on our list, and this is pretty much across the board for most people out here, is going to be the cost of living, okay? If you haven't heard, the cost of living is super high and very comparable to, I would say, the likes of Southern California, LA, and San Diego, okay? It's very high in those types of, when we're talking about, you know, um, average price of uh, homes being sold, excuse me, or average price of rent. When we're talking about cost of consumer goods, right? And all the inflation that's happening right now anyway at the time of this recording. So all these things are going up. The cost of living is going up. Now, am I just saying that to just say, hey, it's expensive to live out here? Not necessarily. Let's think about some other things that this plays a factor in. So. You may have to have two jobs. You may have to have three jobs. It really depends on your career, where you're at in life, and those types of things. Everybody's situation is different. We're not talking about, you know, super rich people and stuff like that. That just come out here and buy the $25, $25 million mansion. $25 mansion, that'd be great, right? $25 million mansion. Um, we're talking about people who are coming out here and just, you know, regular working class people. It's gonna be a little bit more expensive. You're not gonna get as much bang for your buck. We talked about consumer goods going up. You may have to work a job or two to really make ends meet um, depends right situation dependent please situation dependent everybody's situation is different 
but there are a lot of people that do work two jobs out here to make ends meet and that way they can live a little bit more comfortable they just recently came out and said that you know to be comfortable out here you do have to make upwards of around 150 grand if not more if you're dual income family and you're around that mark you're gonna be okay you know you're okay right um, but a lot of times people have to work extra jobs what does this do to the body really let's think about it like that when you have bills that are really really high right and you're creating more stress on yourself your family right how am I gonna pay this bill how am I gonna pay rent this month how am I gonna pay my mortgage this month right this is it's gonna create a lot of stress on the body so when you live in a higher cost of living place before you even come out here, make sure that you're in a spot, you're in a good spot, you already have a job lined up, whatever the case may be. If you're in the military, you're getting VAH, you're good um, for the most part. But you're gonna wanna make sure you have those things lined up and you really wanna start analyzing, okay, how much is it gonna cost me to rent, right, or buy, right? Um, we don't help rentals, I'm sorry, but we do help with sales. And if you're thinking about buying, right, how much is it gonna cost me, what's my mortgage gonna be? We always talk in terms of your ideal monthly budget. We don't talk about purchase price necessarily. We're looking at ideal monthly budget. We reverse engineer it. But the cost of living out here can just be super stressful. If you've got kids to feed, right? You've got multiple mouths to feed, all this type of stuff. This can really start to bring a lot of stress onto you and we don't want that. So we just want to make sure that you are going to be okay when you get out here, okay? So that's not me saying don't move out here because you're broke. Like I'm not saying that at all. Everybody's situation is um, independent, right? Everybody's got the different situation. Everybody's got different life experiences, different situations, different things going on. So like I said, you can get on the call with us and you can we can talk more about your situation. And I'm gonna be upfront with you and let you know. Like I've had people straight up get on calls with me and they, hey, we wanna rent. We don't really have a job yet. And I'm, I'm telling them, I'm trying to, trying to give, point them in the right direction as to far as like, here's what I recommend that you do first before you make that jump out here um, and then you find yourself in a bad way and then you have to go back. So cost of living can be super stressful on the body, the mind, and you wanna make sure that you're gonna be in a good spot before you do make the move out here, right? And those types of things. We just covered five things that we hate about living in Hawaii. These things, we love Hawaii. We absolutely love Hawaii. We love living here and raising our family here, but these are some of the things that it's just like, oh man, here I am in traffic again. I didn't plan my day how I said I was going to, right? So, or the summer, it's hot and my AC, my electric bill is now $600 because I gotta run the AC all day to keep myself cool and I don't hot box my kids and my kids walking around the house in their underwear sweating, right? So, these are the types of things, it's like, oh, I love Hawaii, but these things, man, I could, I could definitely do, do without these things, right? And these are some of the things, like we said in the beginning, you may just be okay with these things or these may be deal breakers for you. Whatever the case may be, if you made it this far, don't forget to hit that like button, it helps anybody else be able to find this information hit the subscribe button and that notification bell so that you get notified anytime that i put out a new video on this channel and like i said we get so many people reaching out every single day and we absolutely love it don't be that person at the open house going hey i seen you on youtube like you didn't reach out right so don't be that person shoot me the text give me the call send me the email you can skip all that and use the link down in the description below to schedule your zoom appointment with myself or a member of my team however you want to get a hold of us we got you back when moving to hawaii there's tons of vlog tours on this channel if you want to get an inside look at what these communities look like. All that and more is going to start popping up for you right now.